This is the Skorhoi C101 model. It's a uh, one unit rack size controller for the uh, Blackmagic ATEM switches. And it has um, 13 buttons, just like a C51, if you saw that video. And uh, in addition, it has a control system over here, menu, display, and a T-bar, a real T-bar. So uh, we can quickly go directly to the demonstration of what the T-bar does. It makes a transition from preview to program. As you can see, we can select the input source over here, etc. So uh, on this side, we have uh, the cut button. And uh, we can see on the multi-viewer, ah, let's select a source there. We can cut between these two. So we can also see the T-bar transition I'm doing right here. Ah, by the way, you can see that I have my laptop configured uh, set up as well with the ATEM software control panel. So all the functions that I'm operating right here are reflected in the interface over here, as you could actually see in this graphics in the background. Ah, yeah, anyway. Uh, let's take a look at the menu system because compared to a C51, you see that we have um, buttons called U1, U2, U3, U4, and those are user buttons. And this can be configured by the menu system what they do. By default, they do the same as on a C51. So we have uh, an auto transition on this one, and we can uh, enable the downstream key of one, disable downstream key of one. And this is known if you go into the menu, you can see that we can go to the user button menu. And in here, it's now revealed that this button is DSK1. Here we have the picture in picture and VGA functionality. This is just a clean picture in picture, etc. So if I turn this knob, you will see that now those two buttons are actually downstream key one and two. So if I enable this, downstream key one and two. If I go back, you'll see that now this button is not lit anymore because it's another functionality uh, associated with that key. And if I go two steps forward, you'll see that now the four buttons are concerned with the um, enabling of upstream keys one to four. So um, maybe we should look at the interface over here because when I begin to push these buttons, you can see in the ATEM software control panel, two, three, and four, you can see these, uh, the yellow buttons from the software control panel are turned on. And um, yeah, if I go further on, you'll see that I have now color one, two, bars and black. So these allows me to select for preview, color one, color two, bars and black. Um, and if I go further on, you can see um, auxiliary one, two, three, and program. This is kind of useful um, in, in a new way because when I push this button, it means that my input select over here is now selecting the source for auxiliary one. So it happens to be that this is auxiliary one. So when I have enabled auxiliary one selection right now, you'll see that I am able to change the input source of auxiliary one. And when I press, as you can see in the menu for program, it's the U4 key, like this. I'm now back to selecting. This is inputs directly to program. So you, you won't see the effect here because this is, this is auxiliary one, but you'll see the effect over here. So when I press now this button, you see that I, I select directly to program. And if I press this button again, so that none of them are selected anymore, I am actually back to my uh, original uh, way of working where I have a preview and program. So what is more in this menu? Um, I have the possibility of selecting transitions. You can see uh, which type of transition. This is where you use the lower knob to change the value. Um, so let's say we go to just a um, just a wipe. Yeah, so let's take a look at preview our program. You can see it's uh, a very nice wipe transition, um, but it's more to illustrate the purpose. You can also set the transition times. It's uh, currently f uh, 25 th uh, frames per second uh, frames in total. We can uh, set fade to black. We can also uh, set the auxiliary one, two, and three directly. And this allows us to see uh, which sources are, are currently selected. And then we can exit the menu. 
for those of you who uh, looked uh, when I first operated the menu, there were a few features in the beginning before I went to the user button sections. And um, let's take a look at that. So you see this is selection for the media bank. So here I can select which still is in the media bank. So I have configured my ATEM switches so that I have uh, name tags in media bank one. I have five name tags and um, since I am now able to change the still in media bank one, by this knob I can simply change between the five name tags that I have put in my media bank. Could be kind, kind of useful, I guess. And if you go to the next point, you can see media bank two. I can also change the still there, etc. The menu system on a C101 is to some degree developed to be a proof of concept. It gives you an idea about what can be obtained through this, but since the software inside is open source, the sketches, it's called sketches, the software you upload to it could be configured exactly for your needs. There are two ways you can go. It's open source, so you can either do it yourself or you can ask us to help you develop the kind of feature set in your menu that you need. We can add features, we can remove features, whatever. One of the points of our products is that you can have it the way you want, you can configure these products to do exactly the kind of job you need in your production setting. Mm -hmm.